watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Lord, praise the Lord. This is the beautiful day. This is the day of the Lord, the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Today, I'm coming to you from Destiny International Missions, 906 Avenue A, KD, Texas. My name is Blessing Cletus Bassey. I come with the word of the Lord. It's always a privilege for us to have a moment of sharing the word of the Lord together. Father, we give you praise. I give you worship and honor and adoration. I thank you for this moment, oh God, that you have given to us to share your word. I thank you for the audience. I thank you for everyone. I pray that you breathe your breath of life upon this word and that every soul, every heart listening will be blessed and be blessed and be touched by you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. This is coming to you from Destiny National Missions, KD, Texas, 906 Avenue A. Your sister, Blessing Cletus Bassi. At Destiny International Missions, uh, we are mandated by the Lord to bring men into their destinies in God. And this is Destiny Encounter Moment. Praise the Lord. Today, I want to continue from what where I stopped over the other time on the word that says, How far can you go? How far can you go with the Lord? You know, uh, in, in the world of today, People consider God as um, a second class or God as no one of those those things. God as one of those bodies that we're talking about. All that like it's not important. It's not important to even go to church. It's not important to look for God. But my dear, and there are those ones that go to church, that love God, that say they know God, but they don't give all. They don't give all their hearts. They don't give everything. That They don't pay attention to what he says. They don't really give him the, the, the ultimate um, role in their lives. Today, I just want to bring this question to you. And I believe this question puzzles mankind for ages. Because how far can you go with the Lord? Or someone will say, well, let me just go and be a nominal Christian. Let me go to church as, as much as I can. I don't want to be involved. Some, some people will say, no, 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 no. I remember when I wanted to, when my husband approached me to marry me, he was already a pastor in the, I mean, doing the work of God. And uh, little did my people know that I had also received the call of God because I was a student and I was in school and I was going to school every day. So they thought, oh, when my sister is back, she's going to go do this, go do that, go do that. They didn't know that I had accepted the call of God, but they knew that I was so involved in the work of the ministry. And so when my husband asked my hand in marriage and I went to tell my, my elder brother, because by, by this time my dad had gone, he had passed. And so telling my elder brother, this guy wants to marry me. He's like, who? What do you want to marry a pastor? How are you going to feed? How will your children? Let me let you know that when the children, when it's time, I won't be taking care of my family and taking care of you. In his little mind, Mind. God cannot sustain me because I'm going to marry a pastor. How far can you go with God? What do you know about God? What? How do you put your trust in him? So uh, uh, today, let me just start with this scripture in, 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 in Matthew's gospel, Matthew's gospel chapter number five, because the question of how far can you go you can go with god has to can also be looked at in our physical journey and it also can be looked at in our spiritual journey and so i don't want to jump over my time and i'm just saying in in matthew's gospel chapter number five verse number 41 the bible says and whosoever shall compel you to go a mile, go with him to end. It time will fail me to read a long scripture in, in that passage because Jesus was trying to tell the children, the, his people, the disciples. He said, listen, 
you can go far with God. You can go beyond just one encounter. You can. Uh, I did, he said, I mean, "This is just the physical." If so, don't don't fight with people. If they want you to go a mile, can you go two miles so that fights will not uh, uh, spring out before between two of you? And that is just the physical journey. So if anyone forces you to go one mile, go. This verse encourages us to go the extra mile in our physical endeavors showing kindness and love even in the face of hardship I mean that is just the physical journey but let's look at the spiritual journey a spiritual journey is even more significant look at the book of philippians chapter number three philippians chapter number three from verses 13 to 14. this is paul i love the writings of paul paul said brethren i cut not myself to have apprehended that is i have not i can't say i have arrived but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward onto those things which are before i press i press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of god in christ jesus i press look at what paul said now if you know who paul was a pharisee of pharisees they, 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 a, 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 I mean, he had studied law. He was, I mean, he was successful in his life. And he thought that he was even, he was so zealous for God, not knowing that he was doing it the wrong way until Jesus appeared to him. And since Jesus appeared to Paul, like the question I'm asking, how far can you go? The guy went all out for the Lord. He gave all that he had. All his life was to preach the gospel. He had to listen to Jesus when he spoke to him. He said, you will go. What you're doing is not right. But let me show you the right way. And I have appointed you an apostle to the Gentiles. You will preach the gospel. And as Paul heard it, he ran with the message. And so no matter what he faced, the, 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 the persecutions, the beatings, the, the scorchings that he went through, but he knew that this was what he must do. He said, no matter what I have done, planting churches, ministering to people, he said, I don't count them as I have done anything. He said, but one, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me. You know, the enemy of success is success. Because when you have found yourself in succeeding in a little thing, you want to pinch your tent there. You don't want to go beyond there. Oh, you start, you still recounting the testimonies of yesterday. It's good to tell the testimonies of yesterday, but let it not be where you build your tent and say, this is where I am. I can't go further. I can't go beyond here. No, Paul said, I press toward the mark. I press. I give my best. I put all my time and I make sure I go beyond because there is a mark for the price of the high calling in God, in Christ Jesus. That's where I'm pressing for. Yes, I have preached to nations. I have, go, I have ministered to people. I have done a lot. But as long as I am here on this earth, I can still praise on. Hallelujah. I can still praise on. I can still get more mountains. I remember in the Old Testament, Caleb came to... to to Joshua and said, listen, 80 years ago, 84, 84 or 85 years ago, Moses told me about this mountain and he said, he's giving it to me and you I haven't seen it. He said, as my strength was then, so is it now. Give me this mountain. I can praise for this mountain. I can praise for what the Lord has said to me. So he said, listen, he said, brother, <laughs> I will have to forget the things that are behind me. In our spiritual work, there's no limit to how far we can go with God. We must continually praise on, seeking a deeper relationship with Him. Seeking a deeper relationship with Him. You no, know, in the other episode when I talked about how far we could go with God, I brought a, a, an analogy of a lady, beautiful story of a lady in Mark's gospel chapter number five, the woman with the issue of blood. 
You know, this woman, the Bible said she had wasted all her goods on doctors, physicians. Because for 12 good years, she was bleeding. My goodness. But she did not stop at one encounter. And when she heard that Jesus was coming, she went in the praise. Now, when you read from verse 25 of that Mark's gospel, you see, there was a crowd thronging around Jesus. The woman said, listen, this crowd cannot be an obstacle. If I can be touch the hem of his garment, how far can you go with your faith? If I can reach, she did not want to touch the whole body. She did not even want Jesus to touch her. All she knew, she set her face like a flint. She set her faith on the word of the Lord. An encounter with Jesus is going to give me my miracle. And so I don't mind the crowd. I'm not looking at the crowd. I will praise. I will push. I will make sure I reach him. No matter how. Even if, if the hem of his garment. I know I will be made whole. And lo and behold. The Bible says as she touched. Immediately the fountain of the blood ceased. Somebody's fountain. That has been disturbing him or her. Is about going to stop. By the time you press on to touch the master, how far can you go? How far can you go in pursuit of your healing? And I tell you the truth. People have gone, have done so many things to reach the master. So you can say, oh, I've gone to church. No, I, my situation is still the same. It doesn't change. Nobody does this. Nobody, because your mindset, be, excuse me, can you change your mindset? Your mindset tells you you cannot. Your mind tells you it's too hard for you to do. Your mind says this thing is too much. I cannot. Well, I have tried. It's not working. That's what your mind tells you. But that's not what God says. Look at what happened in Mark's gospel, chapter number two. Look at what how people could praise on to receive a miracle. From verse number one. And again, he entered into Capernaum. After some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. That is, the people started hearing that Jesus was in their house. Let's go to verse number two. And straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come to him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. That is, four people brought a sick man that was sick of palsy, or that's paralysis. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they laid down the bed, wherein the sick of the palsy lay. My God. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be, be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? How can, who can forgive sins but God only? Verse 8. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his heart, that they so reasoned within themselves. He said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk. Verse 10. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, Verse number 11. I say unto thee, Arise, Take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. Hallelujah. And immediately, immediately, an immediate miracle is about to happen. An immediate miracle is about to reach somebody. And immediately he arose, took up the bed and went forth before them all. 
in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God saying we never saw it in this fashion hallelujah how far can you go it is when you praise it is when you praise it you praise it you praise it you praise it that you begin to see the miracle that you begin to see the breakthrough Jesus looked at these four men and wondered the faith that they had to break can you imagine please let's stop for a while just imagine you are in a church setting or maybe you a, a pastor got a, 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 a building an event center to have a, 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 a meeting and then in the midst of the meeting the roof of somebody's building had cracked open and you're, you, you're lifting your eyes lo and behold a sick or a bed is coming down is coming down with somebody on it oh my goodness i wonder what the pastors of today what we would have done but jesus stopped and looked for a while they interrupted jesus they interrupted his teachings because the bible said he was teaching them and he was healing the sick and this was the crowd was so much they said it was so much that up to do the door he was filled with people at such times, what would you do? Oh, you could give up. I remember it, it, when I was quite young, back in Nigeria, um, um, T.L. Osborne, late T.L. Osborne came to Nigeria to minister. And we went, I was in secondary school, I was in a boarding house. But we, the, the, the advertisement for this meeting had gone so high. That was when we gave... I gave my life to the Lord newly and they were friends of mine also that we gave and the, the joy of the Lord that mean the enthusiasm the excitement of knowing the Lord was so much that we did not mind trekking a long distance from the school to where the meeting the crusades were going on and I tell you we didn't mind the distance to and fro having to trek down there so Jesus was in this kind of a situation. So when we got to that crusade, the, the crowd was so big, so big that, I mean, the good thing was that they had these loudspeakers, they had these floodlights that could pick the, 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 the whole of that environment. So it didn't matter where you stayed. And it was outside. But this one, Jesus was inside. He said, even the door, people filled up the whole place. And the men said, look, we need a miracle for our friend. Do you have friends that could reach their lives like that for you? To break somebody's roof and let you down for Jesus to touch you. That was going far. That was taking it far. Because I'm sure after that they had to repair the roof for the owner. They had to apologize to the owner of the house. They had to apologize if it was in the synagogue to the Pharisees, the, the, the elders of the synagogue. And then he would tell them, fix it up. They knew they were going to fix it up. And so they went far to bring a miracle for their friend. How far can you go in your pursuit of God? How far can you go in your understanding of God? How far can you go? You know, the Bible is talking in, 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 I think in John's gospel, chapter number five. He said, search the scripture. For in it, you think you have, you know, you have eternal life. Search. How far can you go in searching? Proverbs 18, verses 10 to 13. How far, how do you go to God? How are you searching? No, the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous will roar into it. How far are you just prowling and, and well, this, this Christianity thing, I don't know. Um, well, let me just do it one day, take it one day at a time. Let me do it as I can. So I go to church, uh, maybe during um, uh, Easter period, I find myself in church. And then the next day I go to church is the uh, 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 Christmas period. The next day I find myself in church is um, uh, uh, on the first day first Sunday of the month of the year and that's it you've done three times oh my god you've tried <laughs> Proverbs Proverbs 18 
verse 10 to 13. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous will run into it. They don't walk, they run. And when you run to him, he said, and they are safe. He said, the rich man's world is his strong, his strong city and as an high wall in his own country. Verse number 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty and before honor is humility. 13. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. How far can you go with the Lord? Look at verse 10. The name of the Lord. When you find yourself in the name of the Lord, he said you will run into it. And when you run into it, you won't be found being foolish. You will be safe. When you run into the name of the Lord, you will be safe. He's not saying you will walk into it. He said the righteous will run into it. Because it's a strong tower. It's a place of safety. It's a place of protection. The name, how far can you go with the Lord? The place of protection. Do you run into his place of safety? Or you're just walking as you like and mean you're just sprawling and you remember the day you remember God, you feel like remembering that, that there is God. <laughs> you are just wasting your time. How far can you go with God by understanding his boundless love? Because when we question how far we can go, we must remember that God's love knows no bounds. God's love knows no bounds. In the book of Romans chapter number 8, the book of Romans chapter number 8, verse number 38 to 39, it said, for I am persuaded. <laughs> How far? Do you know what it means to be persuaded? You are convinced beyond reasonable doubt. Every reasonable doubt. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no death, no any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Oh, wow. I am so persuaded. I am so convinced. How far can you go? This is Paul talking. Can you join your voice with the voice of Paul here in the book of Romans chapter 8 and say, I am, look at me. I am persuaded. I am convinced that neither death nor life. These are two extremes. Neither death nor life. Neither angels or demons. Neither the present nor the future. Nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ. That's from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is Paul's persuasion. Yes, I love God so much. And I am persuaded. For I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. And I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded. I came to say to somebody, my dear. There's nothing in this life that could be so important than God. There's nothing that should be so interesting to you than pursuing God. There's nothing that should draw you back, that should even separate you. Some people said, well, I remember a man in my city. Many, many years ago, I was young. And this man had fleets of cars. Every time he had trucks that were being, be doing business for him. And we got to here. So when he died towards the end of his life, he, wasn't, he didn't even die in, in a good old age. I think that man died about his six, in his 60s or, or 50s. He was like, that. the story is that 
when this man was young, he was trying to make wealth. He was trying to do business. And he was a church goer. He used to go to church because he didn't know God. He was just going to church. And one day he said, leave, leave me alone with church. I don't have any business with church. I asked the Lord to give me money and he did not give me. And so I went to Satan and Satan gave me money. How, why should I give my money to church? How should I give my money to God? Foolish man. Oh yes, you call someone foolish. That's how the Bible says. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. So it's not me that calls him. It's the, it's the word of God. Foolish man. Towards the end of his life, all those riches evaporated. They all left. He died a very shameful death because he didn't know how to pursue God in his pursuit of wealth. He didn't know how to lean on God. How far can you go? Will you, how far can you obey God? Deuteronomy 5, 33. Deuteronomy 5, verse number 33. says, walk in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. Obedience to God's command will guide you on the right path. He said, you shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God had commanded you that you may live. How far can you go that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess? Ultimately, our destination is not in, of this world. John's Gospel chapter 14 verses 2 to 3. Jesus says something in John's Gospel 14 verses 2 to 3. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. How far? Are you willing to go where Jesus is preparing for you? Are you willing to surrender your life? Are you willing? I pray that God will help you. I pray that you will contemplate on how far you can go. Remember that in both our physical and spiritual journeys, there are no limits to God's love and grace. Hey, when I mention that word grace, it kicks something from my inside because I know grace found me. Our ultimate destination is with him in eternity. So let us go the extra mile. Praise on in our faith. And find comfort in the boundless love of our Heavenly Father. May we continue our journey with obedience, knowing that our destination is secured by the promise of Christ. I pray for you today that the Lord will, will give you a revelation of how you can pursue him and you find him. He said you will find me when you will seek me with all your heart. He said you will find me when you will seek me with all your heart. I pray that your heart will be opened, that you will run. The Bible says the righteous run into his name. His name is a strong tower. May you run into the name of the Lord because there there is safety. There, there is provision. There, there is protection. There, there's every, there's providence. Everything that you could think of. The Lord bless you today. I pray for you that the hand of the Lord will rest upon you and do you good in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. You are now watching Amazing Fire TV.